work in the Word of God a little bit and uh, bring you a message the Lord's been laying on my heart for several weeks. Even back before Christmas, I've been thinking about preaching on this. Revelation chapter 6. Then we're going to read in Revelation chapter 19. So keep get your Bibles open. Amen. Man, I don't know where that water come from. Got cooties in it. They're swimming. Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter number 19. I don't know what cooties are, but that's what it's tasted like. Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 19. All right, let's look here in the Word of God now tonight. You're going to have to stay with me. You're going to get left back in the mud tonight. So we're going to go a long ways in the Word of God and deal with prophecy. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And when I, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him, and power was given unto him, unto them, over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they hail. Now listen to what these people saying during the tribulation. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now over in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse number 11. Revelation 19, 11. Verse 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, that's us, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth will go a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'd like to preach to you tonight on the subject, Five Horsemen in the Book of Revelation. Five Horsemen in the Book of Revelation. Now as we look here in the Word of God, in the Book of Revelation, you see five personages appear on horses. The first four are in Revelation chapter 6. The last one, number 5, is Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 11. Now, the only easiest way to understand the book of Revelation is you've got to remember that the book of Revelation 
is in three parts. Things which were, things which are, and things which shall be hereafter. Everything in Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4 happens during the age you and I are living in that we call the church age. There are seven church ages in the book of Revelation. They correspond, the seven churches, to ages of the church over the past 2,000 years. The age you and I are living in now is called the church of the age of Laodicea. We know that because history bears it out. And we know that because the word Laodicea means uh, to the rights of the people or civil rights that would characterize the church in the last days and also that they're rich, poor, miserable, blind, and naked spiritually even though they have all these material blessings. So you see the rapture of the church is in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. When the trumpet sound, uh, the angel uh, sound, and blow, the, the Lord's trumpet blows, the church is raptured out. That means everything from Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 to Revelation 19 11 is the great tribulation. Everything you read from chapter 4 verse 1 to 1911 is in the great tribulation. In 1911, the Lord comes back with His saints. He comes for His saints in, in chapter 4, verse 1. He comes with His saints in chapter 19, verse 11, and sets up His kingdom on this earth to rule and reign for a thousand years. Now, the tribulation is overlapped in the book of Revelation. It's not chronological. Just like there are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not chronological. They all take place at the same time. There are four accounts of the same story. The life of Jesus. You understand? I'm spitting this out fast, so stay with me. I've got, we got a long way to go in this, okay? Uh, they, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They overlap. They're not chronological. Same way, under the vials, under the bowls, under the seals. You go through the tribulation four times there in the book of Revelation, and it's pictured as underneath the Antichrist like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, here in this story, we're going out uh, uh, through the great tribulation and the tribulation in the four parts. And these first four horsemen represent what goes on during the tribulation. Now, I guess you've figured it out by now if you're visiting that I'm preaching the book of Revelation from the pre-tribulation rapture standpoint, which I believe is the Bible standpoint. Amen? I don't believe in a ruptured rapture. I don't believe the church is going through high. I don't believe the church is going through a third. I don't believe the church is going through one second of the wrath of God that's going to be on this earth. I don't believe we're going to be raptured out of here. According to the Word of God, we'll be taken out in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and go home to be with the Lord. That's what we call the blessed hope. And we're going out of here but to meet the Lord in the air. So it's like this. Like the Lord come back right here. Say, here's the rapture where my foot is. And we go up straight up to meet the Lord in the air. We're up there having the wrinkles ironed out of our wedding garment. Now listen carefully now. While all the great tribulations going on down here, Mark of the Beast, the Antichrist, the plagues, the water turned to blood, the sun, sun get dark, the moon, all that kind of stuff. Then when that period is over, the Lord's coming back on a white horse and we're going to be on white horses behind Him coming back. Now during that time here, down here, He's going to be dealing with the Jews again. Jews are out of fellowship with God right now. The Jews are the estranged wife of Jehovah, God. The church is the bride-to-be of the Lord Jesus Christ. While we're up there getting the wrinkles ironed out of our wedding garment getting ready for the big marriage supper, they're going to be going through the tribulation down here. At the end of the tribulation, that Jew's going to be persecuted more than he ever has been before. The devil's going to be on them like never before. The world's going to be turned against them. Armies can pass about Jerusalem. And right about that time, the Lord's going to open up the sky and come down. Two times in the Word of God in Revelation, a door is open. Revelation 4.1, Revelation 19.11. The first time, somebody goes up. That's us. The second time, somebody comes down. That's us following the Lord and coming down to rule and reign with Him for 1,000 years. We know this because of many of the Scriptures. We know this because of Enoch. Enoch, the Bible said, was the seventh from Adam. And the Bible said Enoch walked with God and was what? Not. 
He disappeared. The Bible said He was translated, that He was not found. They could not find Enoch. He disappeared. Enoch, somebody said that Noah showed that we are going through the tribulation because God didn't take Noah out from before the flood. God preserved Noah through the flood. Noah is not a type of a Christian in the New Testament. Noah is a type of the Jewish remnant being preserved through the flood, uh, the tribulation, pictured by the flood. Enoch is a picture of the church, the seventh from the first Adam. We're the seventh church from the last Adam. And as we walk with God, one of these days we're just going to be not. Just like that. That could happen tonight before I get through preachers. Like that right there, everybody. I mean, gone, man. Like out of here. Disappeared. Like now you see me, now you don't. We see this here, uh, that the Lord's going to come. He's coming to take His children home. He's coming back. He's going to marry them at the church. That's us. And we're going to be married to the Lord. And then we're going to come back and get all of these people and bid them into the marriage feast. Turn to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, by way of introduction, then I'll show you these five horsemen right quick. Luke chapter number 12. If you know somebody don't believe what I'm preaching tonight, and they are a lot of them, I'm telling you. They are a lot of them. You show them this verse of Scripture and then tell them to explain it to you. Luke chapter number 12. Luke chapter number 12. He's telling some people to preserve themselves through here, keep their candles burning and their loins girded and their lights burning. And I want you to notice what he tells this bunch of people. If you don't believe there's a difference between the church and Israel, if you don't believe there's a difference between the rapture and the revelation, you explain to me this first. Come up here at the service and tell me what this means. If you don't, I'm going to tell you what it means. Right here it is. Luke chapter number 12, verse number 35. Let your loins be girded and your lights burning. He's talking to Jews during the tribulation. You know how you know? Next verse. And ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when He will return from the wedding. When he comes out to them people, he's already married. Whoever that is. We're going to be at that marriage. We're going to be the one marrying him. Amen? When he comes here, he comes from the wedding. And that's them people in Matthew 25 that said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to what? Meet him, not marry him. Meet him. He's already got him a wife and married her. All right, let's look at it. Now as we look in Revelation chapter 6 tonight, let's look at this first horseman. There's a lot of disagreement on this. Matter of fact, if you've got a Thompson Chain Reference Bible, the reference is completely wrong. I've got one here, and here in Revelation chapter number 6, if you'll notice you've got a Thompson Chain, the Schofield Bible doesn't have it, but on the Thompson Chain Bible, it says this rider on this first white horse is the Lord Jesus Christ. In a lot of the commentaries, it says this writer in Revelation 6, 2 is the Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of old, old preachers preach this writer here in Revelation 6, 2 is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why they believe it's the Lord Jesus Christ? Because just what the devil wants to do here. This first writer in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2 is the Antichrist counterfeiting the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your Bibles open, I'll prove it to you. Look here, Revelation chapter 6. And look at verse number 1. He said, And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Now, most people just casually reading that would think that's Jesus. No way. You know it's not Jesus. I'm going to show you why it's not Jesus tonight. We know, first of all, that the Antichrist is a counterfeiter. He is a copycat. He is pictured as a counterfeiter. I'll hold your finger there a minute. If you'll notice as you read the Bible, Jesus has a bride, Revelation 21. The devil has a bride who is a city, Revelation 17. Jesus is called the light of the world in John chapter number 8 and verse 12. But Satan is called an angel of light in 2 Corinthians 11 14. Jesus is called King of Kings and the devil is called a king over all the children of pride in the book of Job. 
Jesus is called Prince of Peace in Isaiah 9, 6. The devil is called the Prince of this world in John 14, 30. Jesus is called God and the devil is called the God of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. The Lord Jesus Christ is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the devil is called a roaring lion in 1 Peter. And see, everything Jesus is, the devil copycats. Everything the Lord has, the devil wants to counterfeit. As a matter of fact, when the Antichrist shows up on this earth, the big majority of people will believe that he's Christ, the Messiah. Amen? That's why they say when he's out low, he's in the desert. And lo, he's not there. Don't believe him. For the Lord said, as a lightning shines from one side to the other side, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, I'll tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this is the drama of the ages. Glory to God. I'm glad to be a part of what God Almighty is doing in this generation. Thank God in heaven. He's let us in on the truth. This is the Antichrist coming. Let me show you. Let me prove it to you. All right. Second thing I want to say about this man on this white horse here is when he shows up, he begins the tribulation. That couldn't be Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ come and don't begin the tribulation. When this man rides out on the white horse, the tribulation follows him. Number three, that means if this man was Jesus Christ, it would mean the Catholic Church is right and postmillennialism is correct and that Christ would be gradually conquering the world. Nothing could be further from the truth. He said this man went forth conquering and to conquer. It ain't going to be that way when the real Christ comes. He'll just smash it and set up his kingdom and squish his enemies between his toes like grapes in a vintage. And that's what he's going to do. Amen? Not only that, the Antichrist is, not the Antichrist went forth to conquer and to conquer. And listen to this. Here's the real proof. If there's ever any doubt in your mind that this is not Jesus Christ in Revelation 6, 1, look, or 6, 2, look back at verse 1. And that's the clincher. And it said this. And when I saw when the Lamb opened the seal, there's Jesus. Can y'all see that? It's the Lamb who's opening the seal to let this character out on the earth. Amen? It cannot be Jesus Christ. I don't mean no disrespect beside this Thompson Chain Reference Bible or nothing like that. But listen, the Lamb don't open the seal and then run inside there and get on his horse and come riding out. He opens them up and lets this character out uh, who he is here in Revelation chapter number 6. And brother, not only that, we see that this he comes out imitating as he's trying to deceive the world into Jesus Christ. And by the way, by the way, did you know the world's right now, ready right now to receive the Antichrist? They're ready. They're ready right now, buddy. I noticed the moment of his appearance. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, the world is ripe for a leader. Back in the for depre- uh, uh, early days of the Depression, when they wanted a leader, Hitler showed up on the scene. The world tonight is saying, give us a leader. That's what they're saying. And brother, that's exactly what's going to happen. The moment of his appearance. Notice the manner of his appearance. Second Thessalonians 2 9 tells us he'll be a religious figure. He exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's a religious figure. The manner of his appearance. But then notice the message of his appearance. Second Thessalonians 2 4 said his message will be peace. He'll be a religious politician. And brother, he'll be a Syrian Jew in the flesh. And I'm telling you, brother, when that man steps out on the scene, he'll have such power, he'll have such charisma, he'll have all the answers, and the world will fall at his feet. Buddy, you know as well as I know, if you listen to the news, the world's getting ready for that right now. You know what politics is, don't you? Well, I told you before, poly means plural, a bunch of. Many, many, plural. And tick is a bloodsucker. Many bloodsuckers. That's what politics mean. I don't want, I've never heard this before. I just thought of this one. See if this is right. You can tell me if it's right. I just thought of this. The other day, I was thinking, I thought, well, if politics means many bloodsuckers, 
what does Congress mean? And then I thought, con, Congress, Congress, pro, con, pro and con, pro and con. You hear people say, what's the pros and cons? That's off, pros opposite of con, right? Yeah. I'll teach you English, ready? Pros opposite of con. What's progress? <laughs> progress, man. Moving forward. Con is the opposite of pro. What's Congress? Moving backward. Progress, moving forward. Congress, going backwards. That's what it means. I figured that out. They should have called it the progress instead of the Congress. That means we're going back. <laughs> we're getting in debt worse, going in deeper. Well, anyway, that's what he's going to do. And buddy, when he comes, he's going to say, I'm going to solve the drug problems. And everybody's going to say, how are you going to do that? And he's going to say, get rid of cash. If you want to solve the drug problem, get rid of cash. All you got to do is you want to stop prostitution? Get rid you know why people are breaking in these pits, robbing old ladies? Stealing that cash. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's start doing business by credit card. And put it all on the card. Somebody will say, but wait a minute. Credit cards get lost. Credit cards get stole. Did you know they're going to have to redo all the computer setup and everything in the year 2000 anyway? In about two and a half years or so? You think about that, man. And he's going to say, all we got to do is put it on the hand. And everybody's going to say, cool. That is the best idea. We won't have to carry our purse. You won't have to worry about getting mugged. You won't have to, all you gotta do is go shopping. Now don't you ladies, won't that be a blessing? Not have to carry that big old, uh, suitcase Sunyans carry around all the time. And you walk in the store, whatever you want to buy your groceries, just go, and they'll deduct. You bought a hundred dollars worth of groceries. You got five hundred dollars in the bank. Now you got 400, you don't even have to fool with it. That stops the mugging, that stops the drug trade, and if you don't think this world would fall at the feet of a man who could stop the drug problem, you just don't know what you're thinking about, uh, what you're talking about. But if they will worship it. You say, well what about the people who know God will send them strong delusion that they'll believe a lie and believe, because they believe not the truth that they might be saved. That's the first horseman. Alright, let's see this second one. This second one, there went out a second horse, the Bible says, said in verse 3, that was red. This red horseman comes right out behind the Antichrist and his purpose is to take peace from the earth. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians 5, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. There's going to be war. Do you hear me? There's going to be war. There's going to be at least three more wars in the future. Somebody said, well, we've just about seen all the wars, ain't we? No, three big ones is coming. There's one at the beginning of the tribulation. There's one at the end of the tribulation, the battle of Armageddon. And there's one at the end of the millennium when the, when the fire from heaven comes down and devours the armies that are gathered together against the Lord. Three wars coming up in the future. This one here, his horse is red. There's a terrible war coming on planet earth after me and you's gone from here. His job, take peace from the earth. Wars and rumors of war. Did you know there's been 14,530 some odd wars since the beginning of time? Did you know there ain't been five minutes peace on this earth since Cain knocked Abel's brains out? Did you know people's been fussing and fighting since the beginning of time? And they're going to keep it up. Some nut got on TV some time ago and said, we are entering the great age of peace. Not on your life, buddy. Listen, we can disarm ourselves and get rid of all of our missiles? Do you honestly think them other countries going to do the same thing? We donate them a bunch of scrap metal. I'll tell you what they'll do, buddy. They'll shoot it back at us. And I want to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we better make up our mind that we're going to be going out of here in the rapture because war is coming on this planet that you and I live on. I'll guarantee you that. In all these wars, there's been over 3,640,000,000 casualties in this war. And in these wars, enough money's been spent to put a gold bag 97 miles wide and 33 feet thick around the planet Earth. That's how much money I've been spent on war. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a horrible, horrible thing just to push button away right now from nuclear war. They have bombs now that can give off as much energy in 15 minutes as the entire World War II used. 15 minutes. 
at the push of a button. And when that rapture hits and that trumpet blows and God's people leave all over this world, strong delusion is going to settle in. The Antichrist will step out and solve the problem of the world. War is going to break out. When they shall say peace and safety. Then right behind him is another horse. The Bible said in chapter 6 and verse 5 and 6, there came out another horse and it was black. These first two causes the third. That's the red represents war. The black here represents sin and harden and, and famine. Black here in this scripture represents famine. The Bible said a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Now we see here in this one two things. Where first of all, we see inflation. Now inflation simply means that your money ain't worth nothing. It means you just buy a whole lot of stuff and the money gets less and less value. You can just print up a bunch of money. They can go print $20 billion this week if they want to, the federal government can, but there's no gold to back up that much uh, paper money and that's what's worth less. So it's called inflation. Now what happens here in this famine is a third part of the earth is in famine. Did you know right after a war, it seemed like as many times, is a terrible famine. And after this great war, there will be a famine in the days of the, oh, in the tribulation. A measure of wheat for a penny. A penny in the New Testament represents one day's wages. You remember that fellow back there that said, go work in my vineyard, and he hired them for a penny a day? So the book says here, a measure of wheat for a penny. That means a man will work all day long just for a measure of wheat. That means some of you fellows make 60, 70, 80, some of you $100 a day, some of you more, some of you $50 a day. It'll take $100 just to feed yourself in one day. That's when famine... Coming on this earth after the war. You talk about disease. Hey, AIDS ain't a drop in the bucket to what's coming to this planet. Buddy, we've rejected God. We've laid out of God's house so long. We've took God's blessings for granted so long that, brother, God's going to get His youngins out of here and the wrath of God is going to be poured out on this earth. You know something? One third of the world tonight is overfed. One third of the world tonight is underfed, and the other third is starving tonight. Tonight, while you and me are sitting here, one third's overfed. That's us, of course. One third's underfed, and the other third is starving tonight. Tonight, right now, there's little kids in other countries that are, they'll pick lice off each other's head and eat them. Listen, during those days of famine in the Old Testament, the Bible said the women sodden their own, they boiled and ate their own children. They'll be eating people. People will be eating people during the Great Tribulation. But I'll tell you what, I'm glad I'm saved even if there wasn't no hell. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to go through that time. Lord have mercy. You think about that. The livestock, the food, Lamentations 4, Lamentations 5 tells you all about it. Somebody said during the, and during the terrible time, they said we've eaten everything we've could. Cats, dogs, mice, trees stripped to their bark, horse manure. They go through the horse manure and eat it because sometimes they can find a grain of food inside the horse manure. You say, there's no way I'd ever do something like that. You know why? Because most of you people right here ain't never even been hungry. We don't know what it's like not have anything to eat. We have no grasp. We can't even grasp that with our mind. Oh, the woes of God and the judgment of God and the, and the wrath of God that's going to be poured out on this ungodly world. Let me ask you something. Don't you think all this joking everybody do on, on daytime TV? Don't you think God sees all the soap operas? Don't you think God sees all the honky tonks and all the nightclubs and them on MTV? There's a show on MTV like this little old blonde-headed whore works on there. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's corrupting our young people like nothing I've ever seen and we call her Jenny the whore and brother I'll tell you what brother she is corrupting the minds of our young people you kids ought to be ashamed no let that trash fill your mind God sees every bit of it amen 
Amen. They blaspheme God from daylight till dark. He sees what's going on. He'll do the judging one day. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Overpopulation. Famine. Will be what's going on. And then the fourth one is in chapter 6 and verse 7 and 8. His name is Death. And hell followed after him. He's a pale horse. Now, a pale horse is the color of a corpse. That represents death. And as this rider goes out, death and hell follow him. And oh, the Bible tells us that much of the population of the world will die. His companion is hell. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 5.14 that hell will enlarge itself to accommodate all the people that will be going to hell. You think of the multiplied millions of people that are going to hell. You think of the millions and millions and millions of people that are already in hell. And the millions that are going. The hell will enlarge itself to accommodate that great numbers of people that are falling in the fire. Lord, what about that? You think about that. And then we noticed His conquest. Hell, one fourth of the earth. As of now, that's a billion and a half people will die in this one rider's conquest. A billion and a half people, 25% of the earth's population will die. Now during that time, the Antichrist will make a covenant with the Jews, right? He's going to come to the Jews. He's going to say, hey, I'm your Messiah. I'm the one that, that uh, you thought Jesus was. And they're going to say, oh, yes, I believe you. You are. But when that guy goes in there and he sits down in that temple and he says, I'm God, worship me. And you've got to have a mark on your hand or your forehead. Them Jews are going to say, no, 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 no. Now, something ain't right here. Our Bible, our Old Testament told us not to put no marks on our body. That's what you kids ought to remember before you get them stupid looking tattoos. God told him in the Old Testament, He said, you're ugly enough as you are. Don't mess yourself up worse. And boy, I'll tell you what God told him. He said, hey, He said, don't you put no marks on your body. He told those Jews back in the Old Testament. Can I get a witness? Okay. This one. Now listen, I want to tell you what, brother, that thing there, that, that thing there kept going, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Then the Antichrist will say, hey, Antichrist will say, hey, I'm going to get you. And they say, no, you're not. Then them which be in Judea are going to flee to the wilderness. These Jews are going to start running from the Antichrist. And they're going to run out across that... And fed them every day and took care of them. You know what he's doing? These Jews are over here getting their eyes open, finally, after 2,000 years of rejection. And they're saying, hey man, that guy was a fake. And they're going to say, reckon that really was him? that we rejected 2,000 years ago. And God's going to start letting that Scripture make sense. And they're going to open their Bible and say, let's see what that man said. And they're going to read the words of Jesus where He said, I am come in My Father's name, and you receive Me not. If another shall come in His own name, Him you will receive. And they're going to say, that was Him. And we missed Him. That was Him, and we missed Him. Now this wicked man and the Bible said, Woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. And the Bible said, Pray that your flock be not in the winter. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not was since the world began, no, nor ever shall be. And that's when he spoke to them people and he said, He that shall endure unto the end. That's the end of that tribulation. The same shall be saved. That's a scripture some of you have been wondering about all these years. Right there at the end of that tribulation, the Lord told him, He said, you just wait on Him, He'll be here soon. And after that terrible deceiver, the Antichrist on the white horse comes. After that rider on the red horse comes, and wars break out all over the world. And after that rider on the black horse comes, and famine comes out over this world. And the boils break out on people that big. And people are going to be cursing God for the plagues that are upon the earth. And brother, it's going to be a wicked time. As it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. They're going to hate God. They're going to cuss God. They're going to say, we will not help this man to reign over us. They'll worship the beast. They'll worship the dragon. They'll worship the devil. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. About that time, look out. 
Revelation chapter 19, 11. The fifth horse. Jesus Christ. And at midnight, <laughs> amen, there was a cry made. I don't know who there's going to do, to do that crime. I know there's 144,000 Jews going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. See, the kingdom am coming. That's what's coming. Lord, come back. The kingdom. They're not going to be preaching the gospel of the grace of God. That's this dispensation. The gospel of the grace of God is preached now. The gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in the tribulation. Amen? But I'll tell you what, they're going to go out and preach that gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom's coming! The kingdom's coming! The kingdom's coming! And they're going to have a bunch of converts, and they're going to be out there waiting. Now let's read it again and see if it makes more sense. Revelation 19.11. Revelation 19.11. Hallelujah. Think about this, buddy. The drama of the ages begins to unfold. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. Now this is the right one. That fake one comes first, always in the Bible. The fake one, he that's born after the flesh, and then he's that's born after the Spirit. Amen. Look at verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. No doubt about who this one is. It don't leave you hanging. Hey, man, he said on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Hey, man, buddy, he's going to do it righteously. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. You say, where'd he get them many crowns? That's them crowns we throw at his feet. When we got there and saw it and took our crown and said, them all belongs to him. When I get to heaven, we get our crown. We're going to cast them at the feet of Jesus. He's going to have many crowns on his head. And he that had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven, there's me and you. You're in that verse, man. If you're, in, if you're saved, you're right there in that verse. You follow him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Amen. You say, I'm scared of horses. You won't be scared of these horses. They can fly. If you fell off, it wouldn't hurt you. They'd zip down a hundred light years down and go, and scoop the right back up. And we're going to come. Now here's the way it's going to go. Here's the way it's going to go. You listen? Here's the way it's going to go. Notice, brother, his wardrobe. He was clothed in fine linen. Notice, brother, the armies of heaven follow him. Notice, he has many crowns. Notice, he has a sharp sword. That's called the Word of God. Notice the witnesses. Hey, man, brother, that's us coming back with him. All of a sudden, there's going to be a big a trumpet blow or a big, big sound. For, I know somebody's going to say a midnight cry. And they're going to say, Hey! Everybody, here he comes. And in the heaven, the door is going to open. And this white horse comes down through the sky. And here he comes. Now these people down here on earth, they're going to be wanting, where's he at? Where's he at? We ain't got nothing to eat. The Antichrist is persecuting us. He's going to get us. It's, and it's just like in the old movies. It's just like in the old movies. You see? The drama of the ages begin to unfold. It always in old timey movies used to go like this. The villain. You always had the villain, and then you had the, the helpless little young girl, the pretty young maiden. And the villain stole the young maiden. And he took off her and he took off on his horse. And he took her off to kill her. And he went out there and he's gonna he tied her on the railroad track. And she's laying on the railroad track. And the music starts playing. And the music starts playing. Oh no. Oh no. Ah! And it's another to be continued next week. Will she get off the track? Now, over here, back here, uh, the good guy's tied up. They had him tied up. In this case, they put nails in his hand and in his feet where he couldn't rescue the fine maiden or the fair maiden. But he gets loose at the last minute. And he comes out on a white horse. And boy, here he comes. And boy, the next thing you know, here comes Hilo Silver, brother. And I'm telling you, he comes down and he rescues. And he grabs the young maiden. And he gets her. And he rescues her. Like it. And he kicks the villain off down in the canyon somewhere, and they ride off in the sunset to live happily ever after. Buddy, that's what's going to happen. 
And God's going to have that thing set up where that devil says, I'm going to get them Jews for the last time. Amen. And it begins to climax the drama of the ages. I thought it might be like this. It's just my, my thinking. I thought of this. I ain't never heard nobody else preach on this, but what do they be singing? Here's what they'll be singing. <laughs> you ain't going to believe this, but this is the song. Jews, right? We're at the end of the tribulation. The Antichrist is going to be... Now they all know that the church went to heaven seven years ago. And the church is up there with Jesus. And they'll say, where is he? Where's he at? Where's his bride? Where are, where are, where are they? His bride will be here in a little bit. She's coming and we're going to reign forever with Jesus. And then they'll start singing. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. And that'll be their comfort. You don't believe it. You say, now, Brother Danny, no other preacher that. Well, I don't care. They, ain't, they don't know everything. That's what they'll sing, bless God. It'll be in their hymn books there in the Jews during the tribulation. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Hang on another day or two, boys. Endure to the end. Second verse. She'll be riding them white horses when she comes. She'll be riding them white horses when she comes. She'll be riding them white horses. She'll be riding them white horses. She'll be riding them white horses when she comes. And they say, oh boys, you know what Matthew 25 said? Matthew 25 said, oh, behold, the bridegroom cometh to what? Go ye out to what? And the third third we will all go to meet her when she comes. We will all go to meet her when she comes. Woo! We will all go to meet her. We will all go to meet her. We will all. That's what's going to happen. The Lord's going to come in the sky. They're going to rise up to meet Him. Some of you still don't believe that, do you? Oh, yeah? You know where we're going when we meet Him? We're going to the marriage supper. We will have chicken and ducklings when she comes. Woo! We will have chicken and ducklings when she comes. We will have chicken and ducklings. We will have chicken and ducklings. We will have... What in the world do you think we're going to eat at the marriage supper? Tacos? Hey, I know a bunch of preachers would get mad and backslide if we didn't have chicken at the marriage supper lounge. Hey, man, we will have chicken and dumplings when she comes. We will have chicken and dumplings when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. We're going to eat chicken and dumplings. Yes, sir. And they'll all join in. You say, Brother Danny, they'll always say, we will kill the old red rooster. That's the devil. When she comes. Woo! We will kill the old red rooster when she comes. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do right there? All right there, he's going to tie an old red rooster up, pictured by the devil. Well, us preachers don't like roosters anyway. Because when I'm told on Peter, we've been back ever since. That's why we like chicken so much. Let me tell you something, buddy. We're going to, the devil's going to be put there. And you know what's going to happen at the beginning of that thousand years? We're going to kill the old red rooster. And they're going to bind him up like that. The devil said, I saw an angel with a great chain in his hand. And he's going to come down. And he's going to bind the devil. Put the devil on a chain gang. And they're going to wrap the devil up in that chain like that. Then all God's people is going to get together. Can we say, can we help, Lord? Can we help? He said, yeah, come on over here. Can I help, Jesus? Can I help? Yeah, come on over here. And we're going to get back here. And they're going to lay there and down there is going to be the, the pit, the bottomless pit. And he's going to say, all right, who wants to help? And we're going to get our foot back like this. And we're going to think, you sorry, low down devil, all the trouble you've caused me, all the heartache, all the people you've sent to hell. And we're going to say, one, two, three, boom! And kick him off down through yonder. He'll be put on a chain game for a thousand years. And we'll eat the chicken and dumplings and worship the Lord and rule and reign with him for one thousand years on this earth. If I could make a movie out of that, buddy, it'd be the blockbuster. Sound effects, lights, camera, action! Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? Somebody sing. You sing. Somebody sing. When my, when, if my robe is white, when he calls me, if my robe is white, 
I will hear him. If my robe is quiet, I will he when he calls me. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. See, we ain't going to stay in Marion forever. Thank God. You, you, people, you know what your problem is? You get too tangled up in your bills and your job. And it, hey, it ain't going to be that long, people. We're fixing to check out of here. The Lord's coming back. I mean, soon. We're already moving into 1997 rapidly. This is February. He's coming. He's coming. I'll be somewhere listening. I might be driving to West Virginia listening. I might be preaching, listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I don't believe the Lord that saved me when I was a teenager is going to forget about me. I believe when when the roll is called up yonder, we'll be there. Before all this terrible stuff happens on there, we'll go home to be with the Lord. The Bible said God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am burning up, man. It's too late to turn the air conditioner on. But I want to tell you what, buddy. Listen, I want to tell you something. Listen, did you know what? It's getting... I've been <laughs> looking awful there. I tell you what, buddy. Listen, he's coming and his name... His name is called the Word of God and he's going to call your name if you're saved. If you're not saved, you don't get to go. You don't get to go if you're not saved. Are you ready? We ought to be shouting happy tonight, even if there wasn't a hell. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Let's stand tonight with our heads bowed. Heads bowed, eyes closed, they're getting us a song. Now, praise God. How about it'll be worth it all when we see Christ? Can you get that? The band will come. Every head bowed and eyes are closed. Let's just sing and rejoice a little bit. Are you saved? Then let's just rejoice. If you're not saved, come and get saved tonight. He's coming as a thief in the night, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Don't be left behind, friend. You need to rededicate your life. Come on, somebody else. Others need to come. Others need to come right now. Others need to come right now. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. You say, preacher, I, all that talk you've done tonight, that scares me. Well, buddy, I'll tell you, it's going to happen. And I didn't touch the tip of the iceberg, man. Buddy, you talk about scary. This thing going to get scary here in the next few years. Hallelujah. All our burdens and problems going to be over. If you're a child of God, you've got it whooped, man. You, all you've got to worry about is making it in that rapture. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when that judgment seat of Christ is over, it's all over but the shouting from then on. We'll shout for the all throughout eternity for what Jesus did for us. Father, do what ought to be done. Bless our church. Lord, call us out. Lord, that's what we are, called out assembly. We're looking for that day when you really call us out. Out of this world. Make it soon, Father, we ask. And help us to get every one we can to go with us. It'd be all right with me, Lord, if you come before the big day. Lord, it'd be the big day, really, up in the sky. I pray, God, that you'd help us to live right and be ready for that time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.